On last week's episode of CGC Weekly, somebody left a comment asking me to make a tutorial on muzzle flashes in Blender, and that inspired an idea that I think is a little bit cooler. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week we're taking a look at how to make colorful smoke puff gunshots in Blender. Now this isn't like something you'd want to use in a VFX shot unless you want to make colorful smoke puffs, um, but it's a really cool kind of abstract realism combination that I really dig. Anyway, here's the final result from today's tutorial. I don't know about you, but I thought that was an awesome result. So let's go ahead and hop into the tutorial. All right, so there is one thing you're going to need in order to get started, and that is a model of a gun. We aren't going to be going over the actual modeling of a gun to use in this, we'll just be going over the smoke puff simulation. So in this case, I'm using a model of a Maxim MG08, which was created by Javier Benitez. He uploaded it to Sketchfab, so thanks a ton to Javier for providing this model for this video. If you guys would like to download this exact project file where I have the gun set up with a backdrop and some lighting, you're welcome to. There will be a download link down in the description. So let's get started with the simulation. So the first thing we need to do in order to get started with our smoke simulation is to add a domain object. A domain object can be any sort of cubic or rectangular object. So I'll just add a cube by pressing Shift A and selecting cube. I'll position this cube right in front of our gun. And you'll notice that our gun is at a slightly awkward angle. It doesn't perfectly fit within the cube. And because we're gonna have the gun shooting smoke out straight along tangential to the gun, we want this cube to kind of line up with it. So I'll switch into top view by pressing seven and then switch into orthographic mode by pressing five on the numpad. I'll press R and then Z to rotate the cube across the Z axis and I'll line it up so it's perpendicular to the gun here. I'll also move it right up equal to the barrel. From here, we can switch into edit mode. I'll also leave orthographic view by pressing numpad five again. So I'll switch into edit mode by pressing tab, switch into face select down here at the bottom, which I'm already in, and I'll grab each of these side faces here, and I'm going to press S, Y, Y, actually, you know what, S, X, X is what we want, so S and then the X key twice to scale it along its local X axis, and we'll just scale this domain in a little bit because we won't have that much space on either side of our gun for the smoke plume to travel out. The other thing we're going to do is grab the bottom face of our domain object down here and move it up a little bit. And we'll grab the top and move it up even more. Because in the end, we're gonna have the smoke kind of come out and rise up. So we have to add a little bit more space on top of our domain than we have on the bottom. All right, perfect. So now we have our domain in check. So I'll press tab to exit out of edit mode. I'm going to come into the object settings over here and select the minimum, or from the minimum draw type menu here, we're gonna select wire. And this will make it so that we can see through our cube here and it just shows the wireframe. So this is nice for you know, general domain objects. This works great for fluid simulations too. All right, now we have our domain object. Of course, we haven't added any domain settings, but we need something else to emit smoke. And in order to do this, we're just going to add a small circle on the inside of the barrel of our gun here. So I'll press Shift A and from the mesh category, I'll select circle. Now it'll add our circle all the way over here, so I'll scooch it into the center here, and I'll scale it down quite a bit. I'm not gonna scale it down too much though, because we also have to fill this in. So in order to fill it in with a face, we'll just press tab and press F, and now it is filled in. So we'll press tab to exit out of edit mode, and we'll do our best to position this inside of the barrel of the gun. This is gonna be a little bit tricky, especially because I placed the gun at an awkward angle here, but we should be able to get it with just a little bit of tweaking. The idea here is to line it up with the same angle that the gun barrel has. So that way when the smoke emits out of it, we don't have any awkward, you know, direction changes out of the barrel. We want it lined up perfectly, or at least as perfectly as we can get it. And you'll notice when I put this in here, I do make it just a little bit smaller than the entirety of the barrel. That's just to allow some room on either side for smoke to generate. Switching into wireframe view helps a lot with this. As you can see, when I switched into wireframe by pressing Z, you can see that the circle here is actually just a little bit slanted backwards. So we'll slant that to make it a little bit more on par with the rest of the gun like that. And then if we exit out of wireframe view, we can see that we now have 
our circle inside of our barrel, and this is going to be our flow object. I'm actually going to name this object flow, and I'm also going to select our domain object and name it domain. That way we can keep track of things a little bit better. Great, so now let's add some physics settings to our domain object. In order to do this, I'll come over to the physics tab, I'll select smoke, and I'll select domain. Next, we're going to select the tiny little circle inside the barrel of our gun here. We're going to select smoke as well, but this time we're going to select flow. Now, if we hit play, we should see our smoke animation. Oh, and you can also see there, I did actually animate the barrel of the gun to jump up a little bit. But if we come back to frame zero a few times, you might have to do it more than once, we do begin to see smoke emitting from the barrel of our gun, which is perfect. So as you can see, the smoke is kind of just rising up straight out of the barrel. And we want this smoke to actually have a shooting motion as if the gun is blasting it out. So in order to give it that effect, we'll first pause the simulation. You might have to go back to a frame where there isn't much smoke and select the flow object from the inside if it isn't already selected. We'll check the initial velocity tab, set the source velocity to zero. By the way, the source velocity is the velocity of the smoke taken from the object. So if for example, our emitter was moving at five meters per second, the smoke emitted would also be moving at five meters per second. Instead, we're going to add some normal strength, which ejects smoke in the normal direction of the face. So in this case, we'll set this to a value of about three, and then we'll hit play again. And as you can see, the smoke now launches out of the gun as opposed to just kind of sitting there on the surface. Perfect. Another thing we'll do is crank up the amount of subframes to maybe one or two. This will allow some extra steps in between the frames to make a more accurate smoke simulation. If you find that you're having trouble and you're having a lot of strange banding in your simulation, especially once we up, up the, or increase the resolution, you might want to increase the subframes a little bit, but usually you don't have to go too high with this. Perfect. That's all the settings that we need to tweak for the flow object. Now we just need to tweak some domain settings. So I'll select our smoke domain, and the first thing I'm going to do is change the divisions up to a little bit higher number. We'll choose something like 64. This will cause your simulation to slow down quite a bit because it's a higher resolution smoke simulation, but you should also notice that it begins to look a lot better. In addition, we'll check the box down here that says smoke adaptive domain. Oh, apparently stuff is not being able to be synced with my home computer. Stop. Stop. Ah, <laughs> my computer's trying to attack me. Okay, I think it's done. All right, anyway. So yeah, now you can see that the smoke is a little bit faster because the domain object is actually being conformed to the shape of the smoke as it's being emitted, so we aren't calculating extra space that we aren't using. All right, the next thing that we need to do is change the temperature difference to about 0.2. That way it has a little bit more, uh, a higher tendency to rise, basically. And then we'll also change the density to zero because we don't want the density of this to affect it at all. We just want this puff of smoke to come out and just float up happily. Great, the only other thing we need to do here is change into smoke high resolution mode. And this will add some extra detail to the surface of our smoke and create a lot more detail, especially in the edges of our smoke. Now, do note that this will slow down your smoke simulation a lot and it probably won't be able to run in real time anymore. If you're really having trouble, you can uncheck this box that says show high resolution. That way the high resolution mesh will be restricted only to rendering. All right. So it seems like we have the base of our, or the basis of our smoke going, but the issue is right now the gun is kind of just like spurting out smoke like a hose. We kind of want it to be a single puff, like it just shot a bullet, but that bullet was just powder. So in order to accommodate for this, we'll select the flow object. We'll come to where this gun fires, which in my case is frame 20. So we'll go to the frame before that actually. And we'll insert a location keyframe by pressing I and then selecting location. We'll go one frame into the past, meaning we're now on frame 18, and we'll move the emitter object backwards and out of the domain. It doesn't matter exactly where it is, I'm just hiding it inside of the gun. Um, so we'll move it in there and then we'll add another location keyframe. So when a, e, or when a flow object is outside of the domain, it actually won't produce any smoke at all, so we can just imagine as though there is nothing happening between frame 0 and 18. Then on frame 20, it teleports in, it kind of goes through the rounds, and then we'll make it leave maybe around frame 26. So I'll set another keyframe here on frame 26 by pressing I and selecting location. 
I'll go to the next frame and I'll move our object outside of our domain once again and I'll hide it inside of the gun just because we don't want to have to deal with it when it's outside. And we'll add another location keyframe. So now if we hit play from the beginning, you can see that nothing happens and then a little puff of smoke is emitted and then nothing more. This is exactly what we're looking for. So now let's work on some aesthetics, making the smoke look pretty and actually renderable. Before I do that though, we have to actually bake the simulation. And it's a good idea to always bake with a very high resolution when you're working with smoke simulations. Otherwise, things can look a little bit uncanny. I'd recommend any value between 150 and 200 if you have a decently powerful computer. Of course, if your system isn't quite up to par and you're worried about something that high, you can always opt for a lower value around 100. I'm going to go to with a value of 175 for mine, and I'll hit bake down in the smoke cache settings. Our animation will begin baking, and hopefully it won't take too terribly long. All right, so our simulation just finished baking. Fortunately, it only took about 10 or 15 minutes to do it on, what is this, an 8th gen i7. So, you know, give or take a few minutes for your system, depending on your hardware. Uh, but it shouldn't take too terribly long. And as you can see, if we click play right now, oop, I hit play in reverse. We don't want that. Um, you can see that the smoke puffs out and kind of just chills in the air. And that is exactly what we're looking for. You do, or you can tell that as things get a little bit, you know, more complicated and as it starts to take up more space, it does slow down quite a bit, but that's not really too much to worry about because we aren't gonna be viewing this in real time. So let's get started with working on some materials. I'm gonna get a good angle that I can look at this smoke from. Right about here seems good. I'm actually gonna save my Blender file as well because that's kind of important. What is that? No, oh, I don't know what that error said, but anyway, um, we'll switch into render view to go ahead and take a look at this. You'll notice that right now it just appears to be a block and that's because we don't have any volumetric materials on our domain. So stop notifying me. I don't care if my account settings are out of date. Anyway, we'll select our domain object and we'll split our window so we have a 3D viewport over here and we'll switch over to the node editor on the left over here. We'll click plus to add a new material and we'll delete the diffuse or the diffuse BSDF node that we have. And instead of that, we'll add two shader nodes. We'll add a volume scatter node and we'll also add a volume absorption node. We'll kind of stack these on top of each other here. And we'll also add, I guess, one more node. We'll add an add shader node and we'll hook up the volume scatter into the top, volume absorption into the bottom, and then the output shader in the material output. So now, oh, sorry, not the material output. We want to plug this into the volume output. And just like that, you can see that we begin to see some smoke, but it's not in the shape of the smoke that we made with our simulation. So in order to control density, we'll need to add an attribute node. In order to do that, we'll come into input and we'll select attribute. In the name, we'll type in density. And this is to refer to the density of our smoke simulation that we have baked on our domain object. And we'll use the factor output as the input for our density for both volumetric scatter and volumetric absorption. And just like that, you begin to see the puff of smoke over here. Now, with that being said, this smoke is very faint. It doesn't look, well, it actually looks like a regular gunshot, but we want a nice powdery blow, something very thick and very dense. So in order to increase the density, what we'll do is we'll press Shift A, come down to the Converter section here, select Math, and we'll add in a Math node. We'll drag the factor output into the top of our node here and we'll change the mode to multiply. And we'll change it and we'll multiply, I guess, the value by somewhere around 10. We'll see if that works. We'll plug the multiply value output into the density input for both of these. You can see that it does get a little bit thicker, but it's still not quite as thick as I think I want it to be because you can still see through it quite easily. So we'll change this all the way up to like 100. And that might be a tad bit too thick. So maybe we'll aim for something around 75. Now I am having a slight issue with this right here and it's the fact that this has very smooth edges. So in order to smooth out the edges, we will use a math node. So I'll duplicate the existing math node we have and drop it in between the first attribute and the math node that we just duplicated it from. And we'll switch the mode over to power and this will raise the density number to some sort of exponent. So I'm gonna set this value to maybe 1.5. You can see that by doing that, it does harden up the edges a little bit. I'll mute this node by pressing M and you can see just on the edges, how it just barely takes off some of that extra stuff. 
Um, if you'd like to, you can go for a higher power, maybe around two, but eventually you will have to increase your multiply value to say like 100 or something similar. Um, but we should be able to get some pretty cool results out of it. I'm gonna go for like 1.75 and a value of 90 here in the multiply node. And I'll just organize things a little bit here. That way we don't lose track. All right, perfect. So the only thing we need to do from here is add some colors and get rendering. So you can choose any single color that you want for this. Right now it's white and as you can tell, white doesn't look like the best color for this because it kind of blends in with the background. If we had a blue background, white would look really cool. Um, but we have a white background, so I'm actually gonna go for a blue puff of smoke. So I'm gonna select something that's like a very bright cyan. Um, I don't want it to be entirely saturated. I kind of want it to be a desaturated cyan, but we want to crank the value all the way up to max because we don't want this smoke to be dark and absorb too much light because that volume absorption node will absorb stuff. You'll notice that because we did that, our smoke is actually tinted red and that's because um, it's scattering blue light, meaning more red lights getting through because it's absorbing all light. Um, so in order to make this actually blue, we'll just have to copy and paste this color by pressing Control C with our mouse in the color box and Control V with our mouse in the color box down here. You can see that our smoke becomes solidified. So it does still look a little bit transparent to me. I'm not gonna lie. So we'll change this up to like maybe, oh, not 1.25, 125 and drop the power down to like 1.5, maybe even 1.25. Yeah, there we go. That looks a little bit better. And we can jump to some different frames and see how it looks. But overall, you can see that the smoke just kind of comes through, puffs out, actually. Honestly, it's a lot of tweaking. You just choose the settings that you think look good for your color, and that, that's what you should be happy with. Um, so as you can see, as we skip through these frames here, we'll actually merge this note editor over. Our smoke puffs out, just like a regular bullet, and floats up and away. And you will notice it kind of goes off a little bit further to the left side than I'd like it to here, so I'm actually going to rotate the camera across the Z-axis just a tad. Hang on, let me turn it off. There we go. All right. So just like that, maybe. That way we have a little bit of extra space over there on the left side, composition wise. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and render a single frame of this right now, just to show you guys kind of what it looks like uh, before I do anything else with it. One thing that you should keep in mind is that because we're using volumetrics, you should definitely render at a high sample count. I have this project file set to 500 by default. It's up to you to choose how high you wanna go, but I'd recommend 500 or more. And then also try not to use denoising because denoising can cause really severe artifacts, especially when working with volumetrics. So really try and rely on samples here, not so much on denoising. Anyway, I'm gonna do a render of about 750 samples. We'll save my file before rendering and uh, go ahead and hit F12. All right, so I just finished rendering the single frame and honestly, it looks perfect. Um, it took about six minutes to render on a 1070, so you can kind of base your render times off of that per frame. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and render the full animation. You actually already saw it at the beginning of this, but I guess I'll show it again. Anyway, this about sums up for this project. If you guys do go through with this and you make your own gun shooting out a random color of smoke, share it with us at CG Cookie or with me. I'll leave our Twitter and Instagram tags down at the bottom because I know we'd all love to see what you guys are doing. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you.